Thing. This is an incredible story and it really begins with your life in Syria and the absolutely horrific yeah. uh, conditions uh, that you were living in. You actually were a swimmer, weren't yeah, you, yeah. back in Damascus? Yeah, now 12 years now I've been swimming. Yeah. And sometimes had to train in swimming pools with roofs blown out because of the war. Yeah, exactly. So um, a lot has happened in the last years, uh, of course, obviously because of the war. And um, yeah, once we had normal training and then RBG, I don't know how you say that. <laughs> I'm not an expert in weapons, but... Rop uh, rocket propelled grenades, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, but it didn't explode. Uh, so, like, there was, like, a hole in the roof, and then the, the glass of the pool was always got it, getting damaged, always. It wasn't something normal for mm -hmm. us. And they always, like, re-prepare it and all of that. Um, yeah, then we went to the cabins, and we, we stayed... I don't know, 15 minutes, and then my mom was waiting outside with the car. I thought, it's done. Then we were walking, and then the whole hotel uh, um, glass was thrown. And then I was like... And then we heard that someone died inside, mm -hmm. and someone died in the also football ground because there was a match. So it's really And this horrific. was just one of the days that you'd gone to train in the swimming pool yeah. because you had a dream about being yeah. a swimmer. Yeah, exactly. Um, w at what points, you sort of clearly life was just a, a, an extraordinary experience just to go from day to day. What point did you and your sister realise that you needed to leave? We realised when, when we realised that we are working so hard and, I don't know, waking up every day to a routine that won't change till I'm, I don't know, 60 years old or something. And just working as hard as mm -hmm. I can for that, but nothing is happening. Nothing is, is like paid back or something. Changing, yeah. yeah, I'm not getting anything. I'm working maybe as hard as people who are like in Europe or something, mm -hmm. but I know that I will not reach because why? Because uh, there was war. What's the situation? Yeah. So there, yeah, we had this decision that no, I'm gonna, I wanna leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, we have seen the images of those overcrowded, overloaded boats yeah. full of desperate yeah. people yeah. trying to flee. So, so the thing is that um, obviously the boats are those boats you go like on vacation with mm. for like, I don't know, five people, ten people. But then we were 20 on it and with one kid. Um, and then most of them, they don't know how to swim. And they told us that before. I mean, my sister, we told everyone that we are swimmers. <laughs> we were a little bit too smart. And um, yeah, then when we were on the boat, um, the, bo the motor stopped. And then we were like really surprised because the water was coming in. And then the first one who jumped to the water was the friend of my dad. He was taking care of us. And then after that, he came out to manage the boat mm. because he was the oldest, kind of. And then he was like, yeah, someone have to jump to the water. And then my sister did. Mm -hmm. And then I think unconsciously, I just, me too. Um, and then at that moment, actually, we were fighting because my sister was against me going to the water. So I told her, no, I am also a swimmer. And so I will she was jump. trying to look out for you. And yeah, she was you. like, no, you will get dizzy. And yeah. because I wear glasses also, and mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm the person who gets sick and then get dizzy, you know? You were in the water for hours yeah. um, swimming in order to save the lives of the people on that boat. You eventually got to Germany. Yeah. And as a result, the dream that you have of swimming, representing a yeah. team, being at the Olympics has come true. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> I mean, uh, after one year only of uh, me being in Germany, um, I got the chance to represent millions and millions around the world of refugees, of people who are not having homes, of people who are searching for you know, chances to flee violence and all of that. It was such an honor. And um, yeah, now I have strong voice, strong message, and I'm It's really incredible. Happy. You've written this book, Butterfly, which is yes. your story. And Let the, me show them. There you go, you can. It's a beautiful it's cover. It's and the And the, the book is now being made into a film. Stephen Daldry, who yes. did Billy Elliot, of course, yeah. is turning yeah. it into a film. So you're suddenly going to be represented by a film star. How does that feel? Uh, crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> Do you know who's going to play you? No, no, no idea. But yeah. you're still... Training now for the Olympics. Training, pursuing yeah, your yeah, dream. Yeah. And you're hoping to compete yeah, in Tokyo, Tokyo 2020. 2020. Yeah. Representing the, the refugee team? 
Well, represent or representing. Uh, to be honest, now I'm. I think I'm representing. Yeah, a really um, biggest part of the world, which is obviously my country, Germany, who opened the door for me. Yeah. Refugees around the world and the young youth and everyone. Yeah. Absolutely right. Well, you're right. an extraordinary role Thank model, you. Yusra Thank you so much. Mardini. Thanks very much. Good luck with the book. It's called Thank Butterfly. Thank you. Thank you so much. We we'll look forward to seeing the film and seeing you in Tokyo as well. Yeah, great. Thank you very best. Thank you.